Here is a bulletin from Channel 5 News. Singer Elvis Presley has died in a Memphis, Tennessee hospital. The 45-year-old entertainer apparently died of a respiratory ailment. No other details were given. Repeating, singer Elvis Presley has died at the age of 45. I've been so lonely, baby. I've been so lonely. Pete's story, though it somehow never does, ought to start with his voice, not his weight. Not the Cadillacs and other cars is quietly giving way. Or the funerals or penniless friends he anonymously paid for. Not with his mother's deathbed confession that he was Elvis's love child. I've been so lonely, I can die. The voice, that rich baritone, uncannily similar to Elvis Presley's. Rick caught in a trap. I can't walk out because I love you too much, baby. Each story comes with pictures. Why can't you see? I bet you've already judged Pete Bally. What, what could be me? more pathetic? All by itself, the fact that he's an Elvis impersonator has also set your mind running in that direction. We can't go on together with suspicious minds. He lives in a mobile home in Pahrump, Nevada, a town you've never heard of. In casinos you've probably never heard of, he performs over karaoke tracks. He wears a ring he says was given to his late mother by Elvis Presley himself, who, wait for it, Pete believes to be his biological father. He claims he tracked down some Presley DNA. You guessed it, perfect match. You see, He's no ordinary Elvis impersonator. He's Big Elvis. We can't go on together with suspicious minds. And we can't build up dreams on suspicious minds. When Pete adopted that stage name, Fifteen years ago, he weighed more than 400 pounds. At a friend's suggestion, Pete embraced the weight. He made it part of the act. Boy, oh boy, did Pete embrace the weight. He kept needing bigger and bigger spangled jumpsuits. He couldn't walk from his dressing room to the stage without getting winded. Between songs, he sucked on an oxygen tank. Eventually, he got a custom-made wooden throne and planted himself there instead. Pete went to the post office, entered through the back so no one would laugh at him and asked if he could use the bulk mail scale to weigh himself. Pete Valley tipped the scale at 960 pounds. Fattest Elvis ever. Pathetic, right? Wrong. You couldn't be more wrong. Kentucky rink is for him down, it's for him, and the bullhead's another town that I go walking through. The rain in my Most Elvis impersonators are just cheesy mimics. Searching for you. Come to Viva Las Vegas Wedding Chapel in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada, and I'll marry you. Elvis, thank you very much. As a young man, Pete did look a lot like Elvis, but he no longer does or even tries to. Hair, glasses, and costume notwithstanding. But forget that when you see him. Listen. Sitting on a bench, side of the storm. So yes, you've been here. What a memory was it clear. Was it yesterday? No wait. Maybe fall. I promise to always love you tenderly and 
and never leave you at Heartbreak Hotel. I promise to be your hunk of hunk of burning love. Valley, who I've known for years, a sweetheart of a guy. And matter of fact, he called me one time years ago to fill in for him. And I got up there and sang, did an hour show, it was exhausting. I remember like two one hour shows or something. And people were disappointed because I'm this thin guy. And I think they came to see the whole thing that is big Elvis. Hands down, the voice, stronger and better than Elvis. I mean, people don't like to hear that because they go, oh, there's only one Elvis. But Elvis isn't here, so for 40 years, we're gonna go see someone else. Let's see Big Pete. They love him, he has a following, and there's a reason why. In 1979, age 14, Pete, a sleek six foot one and 185 pounds, sang a few Elvis songs and won his school talent show. His mama pulled up stakes and moved with him to Las Vegas, where they lived in a grim apartment building, surrounded by sketchy bars and rundown motels. It took a while for him to get traction. Off and on, he quit singing, but the microphone kept calling him. In 1995, Big Elvis was born. People, don't you understand? A child needs a helping hand. Or he'll grow to be an angry young man someday. I take a look at you and me. Are we too blind to see? I do we simply turn our heads and look the other way. How is it possible to wake up one day and suddenly notice you weigh half a ton? Most 960-pound people barely leave their bedrooms, much less brave public ridicule to perform three shows a day. On stage, though, no one saw it get to Pete. He wanted his audience to have a good time. He fed off that, pardon the pun. And your dreams forever love grown wrong. Inevitably, though, there were times when stray taunts from drunk audience members stung too deep. Times when Pete finished a show, locked the stage door, and wept, wondering how people could be so mean. I've lost you, yes, I've lost you. Can't reach you anymore. his life, Pete had heard whispers from various family members that his absentee father wasn't his real dad. As Pete's mama was dying, she confided to Pete that she'd had an affair with Elvis Presley. Pete had long suspected that Elvis was his father. He'd even gone in search of proof. In 2002, he'd gotten some of the King's DNA from a former employee of Elvis's, and it came back a match. At first, Pete was ecstatic, but in no time he realized it wouldn't be good enough. The only way to prove the DNA was Elvis's was to get a sample from Lisa Marie Presley. The state made it clear that that was never, ever going to happen. Pete sank into clinical depression and seemingly overnight gained 300 pounds. Pete knew if he didn't do something, he wouldn't be around much longer. I've lost you, yes, I've lost you. Can't reach you anymore. We are to talk it over now. He is today a miracle to behold. In less than five years, the man lost 500 pounds. I've lost you, yes, I've lost you. I'm happy today in the person I've become, and that's for sure. I'm mean, content I'm about all this in the country and uh, how they're simple, and, and, and I like to perform. It's a good life, so I, I'm content with my life now. One more time. He has endured. He's beaten the odds. Diet and exercise alone rarely help you shed more than 10% of your body weight. Pete has lost five times that much since 2005. And so far, he's kept most of it off. It's that sort of determination in the voice and that big, generous heart of his that makes Pete Valley freakishly unusual. Yep. When the 
guy at the soundboard punches up. Thus spoke Zarathustra. The theme music from 2001, A Space Odyssey, which Elvis himself once deployed as he took the stage. Pete emerges from the dressing room, swathed in a black jumpsuit, draped with gold scarves and chains as he heads for his custom-built Elvis throne. Performing really did nourish him, and big, bigger, more at Pete's biggest. Audiences loved it. At that moment, he truly was the biggest act in Vegas. Gotta patch it up, baby, for it tear part of the dream. Gotta patch it up, baby, for it tear part of the seams. Guy's life. Can you feel it in your life? Can you feel it? 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 You can patch it up, baby. 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 Patch it up. That's right. Lord have mercy. 